Uh, we are all happy and excited about your inputs and contribution to ELISA. Let me introduce myself. I'm Saltuk Duran. Uh, I'm an historian. I work as a lecturer and international strategies coordinator at the Istanbul Technical University. I have just joined ELISA, so I'm also onboarding with you today in action. As you may know, the aim of today's presentation is to give the new participants of our team an overview of what ELISA is. Our presentation will mainly be divided into two parts. First, I will make a general presentation of ELISA. Secondly, the representatives of InnoCore as well as of each work package will present their words. I think the best way to start would be for those who haven't seen yet the official informative video presentation of Eliza. You're okay with it? It's just two minutes of uh, presentation. Dear Laura, by the time you read this, it will be the year 2030. A year in which all people have equal opportunities access to food, clean water and energy. We are all healthy and thousands of species on our planet are saved from extinction. That is what some grown-ups say. But today, almost 10 years apart, I wonder how we can accomplish that. My mom says there is a good chance to make it happen. If we all learn how to take the green path and society and we connect it to real people's needs. If we mix disciplines, people and ideas, we design technology and combine resources to solve challenges with love and creativity. If people go beyond borders to learn and work in cooperation with others, celebrating diversity and inclusiveness. My mom is a scientist and says, all these transformations have started and I want to be part of it. That is why I will study to become an engineer in 2030. An Elisa engineer. Yes, I'm really sorry for this technical incidents. We'll make it, uh, sorry. Okay. Before we continue, uh, I would like to give the floor to Eliza Executive Director, Sofia Aguilera, uh, who will share her welcoming thoughts with you. Thank you. Thank you, Sofia. Thank you a lot. It's always difficult to speak after this so beautiful video which is the story of a young girl that has a dream to become an engineer, an engineer which is engaged to society. So welcome everyone. I'm really glad to be here with you today. It's an honor for me to welcome you. Um, European Commission has given us the challenge to create European universities. And uh, with bringing us the challenge of transforming higher education to empower Europe's universities as drivers of social, systemic and sustainable transformation. Three key words that 
are really connected to these ambition and values. Uh, three uh, important words uh, um, with full of meaning. And uh, I think you'll discover this during this onboarding presentation. Uh, together with Elisa, we are building this uh, and we are at the forefront of this unprecedented transformation process. So um, to be here today and see empty full house and full room of new participants and newcomers make me really happy. This is really the first onboarding session. So thank you a lot ITU for hosting it and organizing it. Thank you also for all the speakers that will uh, take the floor to explain and share with you uh, what is RISA, which is the mission, our ambition, and how do we organize the work. So uh, I think to, to whole, uh, I'm really happy because uh, this, this um, alliance is really important ambition. And in five years, you, we want to engage the full members, academics, and students in, in, in this in this project. So uh, we all have a, a role uh, to play. So I'm really happy to onboard you and give the floor to ITU to, to follow with the presentation. Thank you very much, Sofia, uh, for your thoughts and welcoming words. Uh, it was really nice to hear you. Uh, so we'll now start uh, with the presentation of uh, an overview of, of what ELISA is. ELISA, European Engineering, Learning and Innovation Alliance, is the first alliance of nine technical higher education institutions from different countries in Europe, meant to define and implement a new model of European engineer rooted in society following the motto United in Diversity. The Academic Alliance is reinforced by the European Network for Accreditation on Engineering Education and by a large spectrum of partners from industry, associations, and public administration. ELISA's acronym also plays tribute to women engineers through the memory of ELISA Leonida Zanfirescu, one of the very first women to obtain an engineering degree in the world. She also embodied the core elements of ELISA Alliance. She had a multicultural and cross-border background, contributed to engineering with innovative methods for the analysis of minerals and had a determined social commitment. ELISA community brings together people from prestigious higher education institutions from France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Romania, Hungary, and Turkey, all with different sizes, history, and disciplines, but same goal to transform European tech higher education. ELISA is a big multicultural, multilinguistic team made up of 180,000 students, 16,000 faculty members, and 11,000 administrative staff with varied work experiences and different perspectives on strategic and organizational challenges. The ELISA governance relies on bodies, uh, as you may see on the screen. Regarding our mission, ELISA aims to transform European higher education while strengthening links between engineering and society by reinventing the European engineer, democratizing engineering education, evolving interdisciplinary engineering learning, encouraging knowledge, skills, technology transfer, fostering inclusiveness and diversity, making a real impact on society following the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and SDGs. As for our vision, we envision a future where societies thrive and master global changes, challenges with smart and sustainable solutions empowered by European engineering. A future where academic excellence and innovation are always linked to social responsibility and commitment. A future where academic and non-academic partners come together to solve, a real world, uh, to solve real world problems. A future where gender balance in STEM careers, 
sustainable mobility between institutions and cooperation between researchers, students, and civil society are the foundations of a new European higher education. ELISA will lead to a single European cross-border accreditation, a global model that will bring European engineering and therefore European higher education as a whole to the world stage. ELISA will foster a new generation of engineers who will be able to align smart technology with sustainable needs in order to tackle contemporary globally, global challenges. Professionals and committed students, citizens who will contribute to the transformation of the EU into a fair and prosperous society with a modern resource efficient economy. These new European engineers will be ready to work within interdisciplinary, multilingual, diverse and pan-European environments. Another crucial feature of the ELISA project is uh, InnoCore. I will now give the word to the InnoCore representative of ITU, Professor Bersam Hür Sidal Polat, who will make a short presentation. By the way, throughout the presentation, I will leave the slides. So sometimes uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you, uh, but sometimes you may also tell me to move on to the next slide uh, if you wish. Thank you very Thank much you. for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Saltop. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome on board. Uh, I'm Bersan Bolat uh, from Istanbul Technical University. And uh, I'm the coordinator of uh, InnoCore, it is an InnoCore project. And uh, um, uh, InnoCore is a, a research and innovation dimension of uh, ELISA uh, University, mm -hmm. uh, ELISA Alliance. And um, uh, it has, uh, the, the main objective is uh, transforming the research and uh, innovation dimension of uh, ELISA. Uh, so, um, comparing with the ELISA project, uh, it is a, it is a um, uh, Horizon project, uh, and uh, the ELISA project is a Erasmus Plus, and uh, when we compare it, uh, it's a, a Horizon project, and uh, it has uh, some sub objectives, uh, and uh, the, the main objective is uh, um, making a uh, common uh, research and innovation strategy. Uh, and uh, of course, reinforce these kind of uh, strategy with the open science uh, to a new and innovative mechanism and uh, creating the multi labs uh, for um, supporting the uh, research and innovation activities. Uh, of course, uh, the common, uh, common uh, res research are important uh, and uh, enabling uh, joint research uh, is, uh, will be uh, accomplished by uh, in a core project. Uh, and uh, also optimize uh, the uh, outreach activities uh, uh, will be very important uh, for in a core project. And uh, for example, uh, uh, strengthening the uh, co-creation with business and society uh, and uh, co-creation hubs across uh, Europe is, um, is a kind of optimized outreaching activities uh, in under uh, the uh, InnoCore uh, project. Uh, so, uh, the, briefly, uh, we have four dimensions for in a core project and mm -hmm. uh, uh, in order to reach uh, these objectives, uh, we have uh, seven uh, work packages uh, under the in a core project. Uh, uh, we uh, are going to reach our goal uh, in, in implementing these work packages. And uh, the, the main work packages and uh, uh, the leader is ITU, the work package two, ELISA research and innovation strategy. Uh, ITU is the leader of this work packages. ELISA strategic framework uh, for open science practices. UPB is a leader of these work packages. 
Uh, L is a multi-labs uh, sharing and facility equipment, is PCL is the leader, and set of in initiatives for joint research projects, uh, SNS is the leader, reinforcing cooperation, uh, research and innovation with other sectors, uh, especially industry, academic and business cooperation is important, and leader uh, is uh, BME. And uh, the last uh, work packages is uh, creating the uh, embedding for ELISA uh, wide research and innovation structures, structures uh, and uh, I mean optimizing uh, outreach activities. And uh, FO is uh, the leader of uh, these work packages. Uh, so uh, I think. Um, <laughs> I think these are uh, the um, these are uh, enough. I think for uh, in okay uh, in a core project. Uh, so uh, uh, I can uh, stop. But if any question, uh, and uh, I'm very glad uh, to introduce uh, this uh, in a core project to you, uh, and being here. Uh, if you have a question uh, after the presentation, uh, I can uh, answer uh, for your question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Bersam. Uh, I will now give the floor to Eliza Work Package 1 representative uh, from ITU, Professor Emrah Ajar, who will now talk about Eliza Unfolds and later present uh, Work Package 1. Uh, thank you, Saltuk. So we can continue with uh, the next slide. Okay, so uh, when you have some ambitious goals, like uh, the case of ELISA, uh, you need to deviate uh, from the status quo. You have to challenge the status quo. So that means uh, innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship are uh, critical concepts. Uh, so ELISA Unfolds project is uh, part of the initiative of the European um, Institute of Innovation and Technology. And basically the idea, the ambition is to improve uh, the entrepreneurship and innovation capacity uh, of European higher education institutions. Uh, and especially uh, developing a capacity to teach uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, there are valuable opportunities uh, in this uh, uh, project, like uh, we will be able to engage with uh, innovative uh, projects. We'll be working uh, many different externals uh, who have problems, who have uh, offer, who will offer challenges to be solved, let's say. So uh, we will be able to use the collective capacity of the ELISA institutions to address uh, these challenges, including societal ones. So we will be offering specific programs for innovation-driven research uh, because integrating research, uh, innovation and education is one of the fundamental aspects of, of our efforts, which means we will also develop an entrepreneurial curricula uh, in this project. Uh, so, there are other elements you can see on the screen, like advanced training and mentoring schemes. Uh, so, that means there will be many opportunities for startups and venture buildings and so on. Uh, next, please. Uh, okay, so I was just talking about opportunities. Eliza and in our core projects are basically about uh, opportunities. Uh, I mean, uh, there are <clears throat> uh, like, for example, how to become a real world, uh, real world problem uh, solving player, uh, beca because we want to engage with uh, problem owners uh, across Europe uh, and beyond Europe, so that uh, we can be part of the solutions uh, of the problems which which uh, to the in today's let's say contemporary world, uh, being recognized as a new European engineer uh, is part of this vision, and and our students will get a European engineer degree. Uh, that's that's our ambition. Uh, <clears throat> 
so uh, we will talk about the details later uh, in the following slides, but uh, we will be tackling socio technical challenges through innovative and creative processes. Uh, here, uh, ELISA uh, communities will play uh, an important role. ELISA means networking, uh, knowing new people, working with new people uh, in, in interdisciplinary working environments. ELISA is about co creation with people from different disciplines. And of course, mobility is part of uh, our uh, framework. There will be valuable opportunities uh, in different lanes uh, within the ELISA and InnoCore projects. Next, please. There are also uh, very valuable opportunities for, for academics. Perhaps we can uh, come back, not this one, Salt uh, Kojan, the previous one, I guess. The, the previous one, please. Yes, there are also several opportunities uh, which are really exciting for all colleagues from ELISA institutions because ELISA will offer valuable opportunities in terms of uh, using new uh, and innovative ways of teaching and le learning. Uh, so when we work together, we will have valuable opportunities to disseminate our uh, scholar, scholarly works to a larger audience uh, and there will be lots of collaboration platforms uh, for that. Uh, my colleagues will, will probably talk about that. ELISA uh, IT platform will be also fully operational soon. So that means uh, our networking opportunities uh, uh, will be improved significantly. Uh, SDM education, STEM education and society, yes, that's part of our work. Uh, and yes, I have already mentioned the uh, multidisciplinarity issue. Okay, not just for students, but also faculty members. Uh, there will be very uh, valuable environments for uh, uh, multi multidisciplinary, let's say, projects and works. Okay, so I think we can continue with with the next one, please. Okay, so like in every project, um, uh, like in uh, the previous one, Saldkojan, please. Okay, because yeah, the previous one. So. Uh, not this one, <laughs> the next one, please. Yes, okay, we can keep it. Not this one, please. And uh, I, I go one back. Which, uh, okay, the one which shows the work packages. I mean, it, it's- uh, Yes, it's, okay, this one. Not, not this one, it, okay. Just a second. There's I... only this one uh, which shows uh, work packages. This one, you can keep this work okay. package. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, so uh, like in all projects, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the overall uh, tasks are uh, broken down into smaller manageable pieces in the ELISA uh, project. So the title is operational structure, which means how uh, it refers uh, to the ways we, we uh, okay, organize our resources and our tasks. So there are nine work packages uh, within the ELISA projects. Each of them are uh, responsible for different tasks. We have a matrix-like structure. So different uh, colleagues, different members uh, from different ELISA institutions take role in these work packages. Uh, my colleagues will, uh, uh, summarize the achievements uh, we have done so far uh, within the last one years, but to make it more understandable for the rest of the presentation, perhaps I can uh, quickly uh, explain the content or scope of these work packages. The, the first one, the general management and coordination is basically about uh, project management and supporting the governing bodies of the ELISA project. Uh, the second one, enabling engineer, engineering, is uh, deals with the deployment of innovate, ELISA's innovative approach to higher education. Uh, so basically, the goal is to uh, uh, 
make it more concrete uh, when we talk about European engineering model. Uh, so that, that will be the responsibility of the work package too. The third one is education management and accreditation. So basically it focuses on two aspects, uh, educational management and accreditation for a, a joint degree. Uh, my colleagues will explain it a little more. ELISA communities, yes, we, um, we want to extend uh, ELISA higher education from teaching and learning uh, to the proposal of solutions to socio-technical challenges uh, by means of ELISA communities. Uh, and that's one of the uh, most innovative aspects of the ELISA uh, initiative. The work package five is uh, focusing on the link between education, research, and innovation. The idea is to develop a shared, integrated, and a long-term strategy for um, combining research and innovation. Uh, okay, we want to link research and innovation and education in this case. Work package six is about internship, apprenticeship, and partnership. So we want to develop an international uh, apprenticeship internship system. Uh, within the project. Yes, mobility, uh, inclusiveness and student participation. Basically, uh, we want to develop an enhanced culture of inclusiveness across the Alliance and uh, we want to foster active uh, and proactive participation of all uh, students from uh, the ELISA partner universities. And yes, we have disciplinary broadening because we want to incorporate interdisciplinary problem solving uh, skills uh, uh, into our curricula, into the way we think and work. Uh, and yes, finally, we have the sustainability and dissemination work package. Uh, so we want to maximize the impact of ELISA European University, and we want to make it attractive uh, for both ELISA students, academics, and our external stakeholders. So, uh, uh, we can continue with the next one. I think Ignacio is not here, so I may shortly explain uh, uh, the work package uh, one. As I said, the work package one is basically uh, dealing with the project management uh, uh, structure of the ELISA consortium, plus it is uh, supporting uh, the governing uh, bodies of ELISA in collaboration with the ELISA office. And so far, uh, I mean, an ELISA office has been established. Uh, we are so happy to work with Mr. Dale Martin. Uh, he's our first uh, president, ELISA president. And we try to incorporate representatives from uh, uh, students, staff, and our external stakeholders. We, uh, we'll be working with them in the next uh, few years. And now the academic and scientific board one of the governing bodies of, of the ELISA uh, uh, consortium is fully operative. And we are working on the evaluation framework uh, of the ELISA, which is basically about uh, internal quality assurance over activities, let's say. Uh, there is another platform, uh, a glob global forum uh, from uh, other alliances, so that we can exchange knowledge and experience with the representatives of other European university initiatives. That's really very valuable for us. Uh, and yes, we are working on the operational management issues. So what is next? We, uh, our employability and evaluation committee will be fully operative soon. Uh, can you please? Uh, okay, just, and we will focus on our midterm report. Uh, that's uh, well, a critical milestone uh, for us. So we have to demonstrate what we have achieved so far uh, and we will be reporting our progress. And yes, we will apply for a rollout funding. So these are uh, our plans for uh, 2022. Uh, so thank you very much. We will, at the end of the presentation, probably you will have many questions in mind. So we will be answering them. Thank you, Salte Kocam. Thank you, Emrah Hocam, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's now listen to the work package two representative, Professor Ahmed Turan Shahin, who will make uh, a presentation of his work package. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Duran. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, our lead beneficiary is Professor Dr. Philip Berbao, couldn't attend today to the, this meeting, and I uh, uh, want to give some uh, summary information about what we are doing in Word Package 2. Uh, Word Package 2 is enabling engineering curriculum, uh, one of the basis. Uh, work package uh, for ELISA uh, projects and uh, uh, ELISA concentrations. Uh, we have eight uh, objectives uh, in this uh, work package. Uh, first one is develop ELISA joint catalog of learning activities, strengthen pedagog pedagogical skills for professor, develop multilinguism and multiculturalism for staff and students. Uh, fourth one is evaluate the pedagogy of ELISA communities, uh, propose a shared definition of the profile of the European engineer, define learning out outcomes for ELISA degree, integrate BA, BSc, MSc, MS engineering, PhD programs, and last one is implement multi-skilling pilots in engineering education. Uh, during our meetings, uh, we are talking and discussing all of uh, these uh, objectives. Uh, what about our achievements in 2021? Uh, uh, yes, uh, up to now, up to now, uh, we uh, suggest and determine approximately 400 courses, 400 courses in different universities. As you see in here, in uh, BME, uh, suggest 41 courses. Ecole de Point, uh, Paris, uh, suggest three courses. FAO, Frederick Alexander University, suggest 104 uh, four courses. ITU, it's our university, I'm from Istanbul Technical University, suggest uh, 112 courses and Paris Science and Letters suggest uh, 17. Uh, Scholo Normale Superiore suggest 17. Uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid 95 and Universidad Politecnica de Bruxelles suggest 11 courses. When we compare these courses, 199 courses are uh, Bachelor of Science courses and 201 courses is graduate courses. In other words, approximately half of these are uh, undergraduate and the other half is uh, graduate courses. Uh, of course, uh, all of the university's representatives Suggest will suggest new courses and will add some new courses. Uh, also, maybe uh, we will develop some courses related with uh, Eliza. Uh, what is ongoing and goals for 2023? Uh, uh, some uh, universities suggest uh, master and PhD programs, new programs. Uh, international Digital Engineering, Industrial Engineering and International Management. Our University, Istanbul Technical University is thinking also to uh, suggest a course, uh, a program, PhD, a Master and PhD program related to sustainability. Okay, this is a short summary uh, about uh, what we are doing and uh, our goals also related with World Package uh, 2. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Ahmet Uran Shahin. Let's now uh, listen to the ITU representative of the Work Package 3, Professor Shule Atir uh, Satolu, please. Yes. Can we proceed? Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Professor Shule Atir Satolu from Istanbul Technical University. Uh, the uh, the leader of our uh, work package is Thibaut uh, 
Scrisi Beck uh, from Ecole de Po Politique. Uh, I will be presenting instead of Thibault. So our objectives uh, basically in work package three uh, is this, to propose uh, the projection, operational projection of a uh, charter of mutual recognition. Um, especially there are uh, three different ways of uh, recognition of the activities within the uh, ELISA uh, uh, framework. First one is ERISA uh, credential. So for the student activities in the communities in uh, the, the some uh, small activities uh, within these uh, communities uh, are going to be recognized uh, by means of ELISA credentials. ELISA supplement is the recognition of the students' uh, mobility uh, within the Alliance. Uh, this mobility may be in hybrid mode, in face-to-face, -face, uh, or uh, this is a multi-format mobility. Uh, and uh, the last one is the ELISA degree, more um, high level uh, recognition, European recognition of an engineering uh, diploma uh, will be by uh, ELISA degree. So what did we, what we did so far? Uh, we completed the Charter of Mutual, mutual Recognition. Uh, so that's a operational version, version of the uh, Mutual Recognition Charter that is completed. Uh, in our work package, we completed a survey that uh, analyzed the common criteria for graduation in bachelor's degrees and master's degrees, as well as in dual diploma. Uh, of the members of the Alliance. So uh, a workshop with Work Package 7 about uh, Erasmus Without Paper was held. Uh, and the concepts of the ELISA tools were cl clarified. So uh, basically, um, the ELISA credential uh, means a, a collection of uh, graded knowledgeable skills uh, related to sustainable development uh, goals, educational outcomes defined by uh, uh, UNESCO, so that the student builds throughout uh, his or her academic career by participating in the community activities. So these may be in terms of hackathons or some short visits or um, let me say uh, first time lab visit or something like that. These are uh, small activities. Uh, can you go one previous slide, please? Uh, and uh, the a little supplement is, is a kind of uh, certificate that is obtained by the student, uh, where six ECTS per year is required uh, to earn an ELISA degree, ELISA supplement. Uh, so. In this it is a supplement we show the ECTS credits earned by the students uh, by means of um, the all uh, activities in all forms like long or short stay physical in those maybe long short stays or physical digital hybrid mobilities. Eliza degree is the uh, ultimate degree where uh, degree courses uh, are uh, recognized uh, by a European accreditation. The, this will be probably a dual degree or triple degree recognized by uh, multiple universities. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, European accreditation by considering the URAS learning outcomes, gu guidelines, uh, and uh, multidisciplinary and innovative teaching modes uh, will be considered in the while building the ELISA degree. So we are uh, working on um, ELISA credential prototype together with Work Package 4. Uh, and uh, we are preparing a white paper on ELI European di diploma. Uh, so based on the work of Work Package 2 and 8 uh, for the reflection of European engineer. Uh, concept. Next, please. So,
So uh, by means of an ELISA degree, uh, the, it will be a, a multi-site degree where two universities uh, will be collaborating uh, and a, a common internal quality assurance mechanism for the ELISA activities will be uh, utilized uh, for demo demo demonstrating what the European engineer is. Uh, and as I said, uh, Europe, ELISA credential means uh, actually uh, a, a recognition of students' engagement with ELISA, uh, communities especially, uh, though, uh, and uh, the, the students' contribution to social challenge solving processes is uh, recognized by means of ELISA credentials. And, it is a supplement. It is the uh, shows the uh, commitment of the students by means of mobility uh, to uh, to be enrolled in ELISA courses or uh, maybe internships and as well as involvement in communities. Uh, so um, I next. I think, yes, uh, this is my uh, shortly uh, the content of the work package three. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Schule. Uh, we will now hear Mrs. Julia Rosenbusch, uh, project manager from FAU University, uh, Germany, who will present the work package four. Thank yes. you, Julia. Hello, everybody. Hello. So, as you said, my name is Julia Rosenbusch and together with my colleague Eike, I'm leading work package for ELISA communities here in Erlangen, Germany. So the ELISA communities are mission-driven working groups that bring together students, educators, researchers from all partner universities, together with prestigious professionals, NGOs, citizens, private companies and public institutions to find innovat innovative solutions to real world challenges. So what we did so far, so in our first year 2021, we defined what an ELISA community actually is, which criteria should it fulfill, how should it develop over time, how should challenges look like. So we finally did it and uh, I explained it uh, just a moment ago. And as I said, communities, communities is all about bringing people together. So bring them together and let them exchange ideas and learn from each other and with each other. So for creating ELISA communities, we established at first different formats, like the networking event ELISA Connect, where academics and researchers can meet each other and exchange ideas. And also we made some calls for financial support for communities, at some universities at least. So by now, we do have 28 communities running, some a bit more developed, some quite new. And furthermore, uh, our first student community started this month. So here people and students from uh, PSL, EMPC and FAU joined forces, had a common mission and are now working on what they want to um, define as their mission. And later, of course, reach out to other students at other universities, as well as to other professors and collaborators. So now we have these communities, but what should we do now? We want to give them further support and of course then organize again events. So we have the ELISA Knowledge Bite series, for example, and this is an online event series uh, where experts from all ELISA universities give talks on topic that matter when building, growing and teaching in ELISA communities. And um, on 3rd December, uh, there will be a community day. So on this day, we will celebrate all community achievements so far and give an outlook into 2022. Communities there will also learn how to communicate and reach out to different stakeholders in the future. So in 2022, uh, we hopefully um, uh, get the communities running and enable them to uh, are getting even better reaching out and attracting new members. So for doing so, we also want to start the ELISA community platform. Um, Professor Emra uh, mentioned it earlier. Um, so in 2021, we firstly finished the tendering process for an agency, which uh, we are developing uh, the platform with. And the platform actually will be like an online place where community members can meet, can network and present their community and show what they have to offer, which activities, which courses they offer. 
And later in 2022, there will also be a rollout of the Innovation Challenges platform module. Also in 2022, we want to start joint calls for community engagement so that communities will have the opportunity to apply for funding. And last but not least, existing communities will be evaluated and supported when needed. And we are trying to have five to 10 new communities. So if you are interested to create a community or become a part of a community, or somehow want to be connected with communities, just let us know. And yeah, maybe you are one of the five to 10 new communities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rosenbusch. Um, regarding the work package, uh, work package five, uh, unfortunately, the representatives uh, uh, can't be here with us today, but they share the presentation with us. Uh, another video, I hope uh, it will work this time. Please tell me if you can't hear, I'll share it again. Uh, I'll try it like this. Uh, could you please tell me if you don't hear the sound? Well, I know how to do it now, so it will be okay. Hi. This is Akif from Istanbul Technical University. Yes. I'm yeah. the deputy Great. leader of Work Package 5 entitled Link Between Education, Research and Innovation. In a general sense, this work package is related to uh, bringing the research outcomes into the classroom so that students are engaged in learning activities uh, that are related to real life problems, which we call challenges in this context, so that uh, students um, achieve a challenge-based and research-based learning in the classroom. And we expect this to be realized in both undergraduate and graduate levels. Um, about our achievements in this uh, year, uh, we can mention uh, the ELISA Research and Education Collaboration Plan. This is sort of a master plan and an outline of um, our approach to realizing the goals of this work package. And here in this document, um, we outline um, the, the general principles of the activities to take place um, in this context, namely research-based learning meetings and symposia, and uh, joint research activities and programs, also joint PhD programs and entre uh, entrepreneurship uh, training activities, as well as um, undergraduate and graduate level um, research laboratory visits. And uh, we, we held the first research-based learning meeting uh, and in this meeting, we, um, we got informed about the research-based learning practices observed at each ELISA partner. And we discussed how we can uh, frame some of these as uh, ELISA activities rather than activities special to um, that uh, partner uh, specifically. And uh, which of those are available to lend themselves to student mobility? We also talked about the organization of the first research-based learning symposium. Uh, we also uh, built a database of research labs at ELISA Partners. And as I mentioned, uh, this will be a, a, a very valuable um, piece of information when we start um, internships and laboratory visits at both undergraduate and graduate level. And finally, we started data collection on PhD programs, on the requirements uh, of the PhD programs at each institution, and also entrepreneurship training activities. Our goals for the upcoming year is to, to hold research-based learning meetings number two and number three, in, in line with, with the first meeting. And also in May 2022, we are organizing the first research-based learning symposium in which we will hear from experts in engineering education and research-based learning on the philosophy and applications of research-based learning, as well as uh, we will look at the outcomes of 
Elisa communities. And the communities will have a chance to showcase their activities and their research outcomes. And especially, we would like to hear from um, student experiences uh, in their ELISA activities. And we also aim to uh, build the joint PhD degrees protocol. And uh, this, uh, this would include um, the, the curriculum design as well as um, general principles such as SDG alignment. And we also aim to design entrepreneurship training program across ELISA. And we will also initiate research laboratory visits uh, for um, undergraduates um, for one or two weeks. And um, for graduate level, we envision the initiation of laboratory internships uh, for a duration of a semester. We thank the Work Package 5 representatives for this video presentation. We may now move on with the Work Package 6. And here, uh, Professor Laszlo Gergeli. Hi, this is Akif Yazıcı from Istanbul oh, Technical sorry. University. I'm the... Okay. So we will now hear Professor Laszlo Gergeli from BME University, Hungary. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, um, so VP6, uh, um, the main objectives are, are the de uh, development of models for internship, apprenticeship and partnership. Uh, so uh, we can say that we have practically three uh, keywords or three fields here to work on. The first is the internship and apprenticeship model. The second one is, is the uh, entrepreneurship uh, training model. And the third one is, is the partnership. Uh, this year we started with uh, the task of uh, identifying uh, best uh, uh, practices. This was completed uh, by a survey and an analysis of, of the survey results. Just to mention a few outcomes of, of uh, the survey. Uh, practically five existing uh, models were identified among uh, the partners. Uh, and actually, it was uh, recognized that, that um, uh, these existing models uh, could, could provide a solid base for the development of, uh, of the internship uh, framework. Uh, we agreed in that uh, this uh, internship framework or internship model should be a flexible combined system of, um, <clears throat> of the existing ones, should be open for, for everyone, uh, and we would like to affect a large number of students uh, with it. And this system should differentiate in, in line with the needs of the students and universities and, and uh, the end users. Um, <clears throat> the final aim of uh, this work package is uh, going to be to create um, uh, this uh, internship repository and the system of the international uh, internship, which will be also helped by uh, creating an apprenticeship and training uh, uh, office. Um, there was another uh, task for this year, which uh, aimed uh, to uh, analyze uh, the engagement of the public authorities. So it is about uh, the partnerships. Uh, we already have uh, uh, certain organizations as uh, partners, as uh, public uh, authority uh, partners, uh, but uh, based on the analysis of, uh, of this list, uh, we concluded that we need to continue, uh, we need to extend uh, this partnership with the public authorities and we need to have a deeper embedment uh, of these uh, public authorities in uh, ELISA uh, communities. Uh, recently or currently we are working on, on uh, uh, two uh, topics of two fields. Uh, this, uh, these are related to the development of uh, the internship uh, model. One uh, is uh, about the academic requirements and the other one uh, is the uh, legal issues or the legal uh, framework development. Um, uh, we already agreed uh, within VP6 that, that uh, we will need to have differentiation for the different target groups of, uh, of uh, ELISA students. Uh, so one is, uh, so we should have a different model for for the joint degree programs, in which case uh, uh, the uh, internship should be a, a compulsory and, and the dominant uh, one in the curriculum, uh, while for the uh, all the other students it could be a, a very flexible and optional uh, program. 
definitely it should be it should be a challenge based uh, and a community related uh, internship program we need to have we need to create an internship repository that is uh, directly connected or integrated in uh, the community uh, platform uh, regarding the goals for uh, the next year, so we continue uh, working on, on these issues on, on the development of, uh, of uh, the training model. We, we regularly need to review this uh, training model and uh, modify accordingly based on the experiences. Uh, next year we start the implementation of, uh, of this model and start uh, the design of the apprenticeship and uh, training uh, office. We will continue the, the, the work on, uh, on uh, the partnerships uh, issues, not only for the public authorities, but um, uh, all other types of uh, uh, partners with uh, the integration in the community platform. Thank you for these few minutes. Thank you very much, Professor Gergeli. Uh, on behalf of the Work Package 7, we will now hear the international a relations Director, Mrs. Catala Alma uh, from Tessel in Paris Tech, uh, France. Uh, thank you very much. So we're listening to you, Mrs. Alma. So uh, I don't know if you hear me correctly. Yeah, we hear yes. you. Okay, okay, sorry, because from my side I have some connection problems, so I try to be quick. So concerning these war packets uh, at uh, PSL in Paris, we are working in three main topics uh, involving inclusiveness, uh, student participation and how to get involved with the students in ELISA. And also we are dealing with the topic of mobility and student service because we are trying to organize uh, mobility between all the partners al alliance. So we are also working all the top related with uh, this new initiative called Erasmus with all papers, but our experience and trying to comment on uh, some services inside the, inside this topic, but we are also developing for um, for uh, tools or uh, prop tools for us uh, concerning and the mobility interface and also a welcome desk where the alliance want to get involved to do a mobility to participate in any courses that can have information in this welcome desk and also by this uh, mobility interface uh, concerning uh, the student participation. So we are the first step was to organize uh, the representation of the students in the governing board of, uh, of ELISA, uh, what uh, have been done already. And uh, we are trying also to promote any kind of initiative concerning the students association and also uh, about alumni, alumni, alumni network. And concerning inclusiveness, the aim and um, goal of this part um, of the work packets uh, uh, is uh, to uh, promote a gender balance, the social diversity, and uh, to facilitate also the integration of students with special needs. So for that, as you can see, uh, we launched already uh, some initiatives. More specifically, we start with the third part mobility and student service. And we have launched uh, an info session about Erasmus with full papers. So we are working also to, in the extension of the Erasmus agreement between the partners. And we are also trying to, at least, uh, we, yeah, we, we put ourselves the question of how to facilitate all the mobility and selection process. Can we harmonize all this process? And uh, we, um, we try also to work with the Erasmus program and the last call of proposal to introduce new kind of mobility as the blended intensive programs uh, that we are trying to develop also uh, among the, the alliance. Uh, for the next uh, years and the years to come, we really want to go further in the implementation of the Erasmus Without Papers. Uh, Quite quickly, we would like to launch this uh, ELISA Welcome Desk and the mobility interface uh, so to make the students more easy to get all the information about how to get involved in, in ELISA. And for the next year, we are 
going to work in the uh, program for uh, inclusiveness and uh, we are organizing a inclusiveness for forum and contest and uh, a MOOC uh, focusing in, uh, in women leaders in engineering. And the, the, full, the idea is at the end of the project to have a full implementation of the initiative of Erasmus without papers in all the partners from the Alliance. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Salma, for your presentation. Uh, we will now listen to work package eight representative, Professor Calogero Oddo from uh, Scuola Normale Superiore. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Hello. Yeah, I will open my, my video now. So welcome. Thank you for uh, this invitation to this event. And uh, I am uh, a professor in uh, bioengineering. And uh, can you confirm that you see also me? Yeah, OK, thank you. So I'm a professor in uh, bioengineering with uh, a specialization particularly in biorobotics. Uh, I am affiliated to Scuola Superiore di Sant'Anna in Pisa, Italy, to the Biorobotics Institute. And uh, I speak on behalf also of uh, Professor uh, Lorenzo Bartalesi of uh, Scuola Normale Superiore, that is the co-leader of the work package. The objective of work package eight uh, is uh, to enable disciplinary broadening. So basically, we identify the need for the engineer of the future to be able to uh, interact with other disciplines, including uh, biology, medicine, nanotechnologies, uh, social sciences and humanities, such as law, economics, and so on. So with a variety of disciplines, depending on the perspective of uh, uh, job that uh, is targeted by the specific professional. So uh, uh, we wish to design pathways of uh, 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 enlarging the skill set of the engineer with what we call the T model of engineering education. So with a vertical pillar of speciality and then horizontal broadening path towards other disciplines. The, uh, uh, also the other aim on the uh, other way is uh, to also include in other curricula, so non-engineering degrees, uh, engineering skills, so that other professionals, no, non-engineers, uh, can better be able to interact with engineers. The, um, implementation. So this is the overall objective of the work package. So towards this aim, uh, by the way, the, we have a, a continuous consultation for all partners. So apart from Scuola Sant'Anna and Scuola Normale that lead the, 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 the work package, there is a continuous involvement of all the partners of the project, including uh, uh, ITU, including uh, TSL, including FAU, uh, uh, the Università Politecnica di Madrid, uh, the, uh, New, uh, all the partners of the project, of course. The, um, the uh, um, uh, strategy to progress towards this ambition has been first to define a protocol. So a protocol that describes how to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, launch those broadening initiatives that involve the, the uh, um, uh, the, the organization of workshops. The first workshop uh, that was consistent with the protocol defined has been uh, recently organized, led uh, by ITU University and uh, participated by several partners of the consortium. The next uh, workshop, that is uh, the, the, that one that already took place, was on uh, citizen communities uh, led by uh, ITU. And the next workshop will be on sensing sciences and technologies that is scheduled for December 21st. So please save the date. Another workshop will soon come. So basically the outcome of those workshops are some reports edited by a rapporteur of the workshop that will summarize the discussion made during the workshop, describing the skill set needs 
for engineering competencies to be integrated in non-engineering degrees and vice versa, non-engineering competencies to be integrated in engineering degrees. So that in the next period, we could select some topics in order to activate the pilots according to the outcomes of the workshops. Okay, so this is the strategy that uh, is uh, described in the technical annex of the project approved by the European Commission. And now it's at the end of the first year of development. Thank you very much. And uh, for any need you may have, I'm uh, available for further interactions. Thank you very much for your presentation, Professor Odo. Uh, finally, and by the way, let me say welcome again on board uh, yes. all uh, the new uh, comers uh, to the project. So uh, we will we'll be very happy to interact. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Odo. Finally, uh, Professor uh, Diana Robescu from uh, UPV Romania will present the work package nine, please. Uh, Professor Robes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for, first of all, um, uh, thank you ITU team for organizing this event. Uh, this event uh, is organized uh, in the framework of uh, War Package 9 and um, uh, welcome to all uh, new members and hope uh, we increase uh, our members. Uh, this is uh, an activity we intend to organize uh, monthly to welcome uh, new members in ELISA. So the goal of uh, War Package 9 uh, is uh, to communicate and uh, disseminate uh, ELISA results, uh, ELISA progress to increase attractiveness for students, faculty members, and also for uh, external collaborators uh, to maximize the impact of uh, our alliance and uh, to inspire uh, others to follow uh, our idea. Of course, uh, War Package 9 is um, very close to ELISA communication office and uh, is the most transversal one uh, work package in this project. Uh, it is connected to uh, with all the uh, uh, work packages. So uh, um, our achievements in uh, 2021 uh, were uh, uh, elaborating a communication and dissemination plan for um, ELISA also ELISA brand guidelines and communication strategy. Uh, we develop promotional material templates for, for a VP9 representative support in organizing uh, events and uh, to attract uh, new members in the project. Uh, we elaborate uh, dissemination events deliverables, manuals for info days, for onboarding sessions, um, Elisa promotional movie. You can see this movie at the beginning of uh, this session, of this meeting. Uh, there, there is an internal newsletter. Uh, monthly members of Elisa uh, receive this uh, newsletter and uh, I encourage you to um, subscribe to receive this new newsletter to find out more about our alliance and activities in this alliance and also Elisa website uh, was uh, developed and uh, you can find there uh, a lot of information, news, events uh, regarding our alliance. The goals for uh, next year uh, are, uh, of course, to review the plan for uh, communication and dissemination, develop new materials uh, for promoting ELISA, develop new deliverables disseminate for dissemination events, 
Uh, next year, uh, we intend to start organizing public conferences that, is, that are uh, conferences um, uh, focused on external stakeholders of uh, ELISA. Uh, Daniel, thank you very much. Daniel uh, put uh, in the chat the link to subscribe uh, for internal newsletter. You can click and uh, in a flash, you can uh, subscribe for, uh, for this uh, newsletter. Uh, uh, we uh, continue campaign uh, focused on students to involve students in ELISA. Uh, you saw in uh, my colleagues' uh, presentation, there are a lot of opportunities for students and uh, also for faculty members uh, in ELISA. Um, we start uh, organizing inside uh, this work package um, uh, student contest, promote ELISA at conferences and fairs, also in publications, uh, non-scientific publications. Uh, and um, next year, the intention is to release an external newsletter to promote ELISA outside uh, our uh, alliance. Uh, thank you very much. This, this is uh, all uh, we have done and we have in mind uh, for the next year uh, for VP9. And uh, thank you all our colleagues that contributed to organize uh, this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Diana Rovescu, for your presentation. Uh, before we finish our presentations and pass to the questions, I will now give the floor to Professor Emrah Ajar, who will say a few words on how you can get involved uh, in the ELISA project. Okay, uh, so this is a <clears throat> brief summary of a few channels, as Diana explained. Uh, new ones will be added. Uh, in the coming months uh, but basically we have a website <clears throat> uh, and, and we are adding new uh, items uh, to that platform each day because basically Eliza project follows an action research process which means uh, we, we have lots of meetings okay we have lots of inputs from all those work packages so uh, by means of those inputs we build our uni European University model so it's a very dynamic process, which means uh, it's a good idea to follow uh, the ELISA website. Uh, each time you'll be seeing new information and new developments, let's say, from ELISA. We have a LinkedIn account, uh, which is <coughs> used very actively. Uh, so in case you have some specific questions regarding all those work packages and tasks, you can get in touch with your ELISA representative in your institution. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, yes, we have a newsletter uh, and you can simply uh, send email for your representatives or uh, the ELISA the email address. Uh, so, yes, we have an events calendar. Uh, it's a good idea to see if some of those are, are some events, for example, are matching with your areas of interest or work. Uh, that, that can be really very, let's say, uh, useful. Uh, we, as uh, Julia explained, uh, we have um, a part on the website which is specifically concerned with ELISA communities. New ones will be added uh, soon. Uh, so it's, it's, it's also a very dynamic process. So you can easily get in touch with those communities. You can build your own community. So it's a very nice <clears throat> uh let's say a, a very efficient way of getting involved with uh, elisa so i think uh, that's all i can say for now but uh, probably uh, we can give more information uh, in line with uh, co uh, questions let's say thank you Salt. 
Thank you, uh, Emre Hocam, and all the participants for these uh, great uh, presentations uh, that were quite informative for the new participants. Uh, we have now reached the end of our uh, presentations. Uh, we will be uh, glad to hear your questions. Uh, the work package representatives are also uh, will <coughs> also be glad to hear them. Does anyone uh, want to ask any uh, questions? You may speak through the microphone or just uh, write a message. Maybe I'll I'll check the message box also. But like the new onboarding <coughs> participants, maybe they have. Uh, Questions. Yes, Professor Shule Satolu would like to speak, please. Uh, hello again. Another question, but maybe a, a suggestion I can make. So this is an onboarding meeting, so we can spread the word to our uh, other members of faculty members or researchers or students about ELISA as a result of this onboarding meeting. So, for example, in ITU, I know some people, I realized that some of my friends can come and can contribute to, for example, work package uh, seven uh, for, let's say, inclusiveness about refugees and so on. So, uh, if we uh, if we talk, if we can uh, tell our, tell our, the other friends about the communities, what kind of communities there are, and uh, uh, so people uh, may realize that they, they can participate to these communities activities and uh, may enjoy collaborating. So I think the the uh, in the next step after this meeting. It will be a, a good for, uh, thing to, you know, <coughs> tell other people about uh, how they can join the uh, these activities. That's just a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much for your precious comments, uh, Professor uh, Satolo. We will, we will now listen to Diana Robescu. Who raised her hand? Please, uh, if, Professor. If, uh, if I may, uh, uh, I mentioned that. Um, uh, all the uh, participants, uh, all new members uh, will receive next week uh, an onboarding uh, kit and uh, there, uh, uh, in it uh, they can find uh, information presented here and uh, they can uh, forward uh, this information to their colleagues. Also, they can uh, forward the uh, internal newsletter to their colleagues to know about Elisa and uh, thank you Julia. Julia put uh, the link to uh, community's uh, page on the on Elisa website. You can uh, find their uh, information about uh, communities. Also uh, on the website uh, you can find uh, valuable information about uh, uh, credentials. There is an interview about uh, uh, credential with Thibault and uh, also with uh, Laura for, from DP7 regarding to students' uh, mobilities. So uh, uh, you can uh, search on uh, ELISA website and uh, find uh, information, uh, news, events, uh, challenges, contests uh, organized uh, inside Alliance different uh, opportunities for uh, courses uh, uh, organized by uh, alliance partners and so on. So please, uh, you can, uh, you feel free to spread uh, the word about Elisa to all the, your colleagues and uh, hope uh, we have uh, many members at uh, the next uh, onboarding session organized inside the World Package 9. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Diana, for these helpful information for the new participants. Uh, well, I would ask a question to the new participants then. Uh, we know that there are uh, students amongst us. 
Uh, what are your expectations from uh, ELISA project? How did you join this project? Uh, could anyone answer? It's precious for us to know your, uh, your ideas, your experiences. Any student who would like to speak, who would like to present her or himself? We know that there was a list, we received a list. I think the students are a bit shy in the beginning. Maybe academics, new academics. Because we have, uh, we have made a quite a detailed presentation, starting with the overview of ELISA project, like the work packages in depth. For example, the academics, which work packages uh, have you joined uh, recently? And how, what are your expectations, please? I, I think uh, we said all. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah. We said all, we presented all about uh, ELISA uh, because they are newcomers. Uh, probably they uh, wait to find more and uh, probably they don't have uh, too many questions at, at the beginning. Uh, but they aim at, at the same. The, yeah, please. No, no, <laughs> please, uh, please, Salto. You're welcome, please, please. At the same time, the aim of this uh, onboarding session is also to get to know each other, to present ourselves. So uh, maybe not a question, but does anyone want to uh, just present her or himself uh, from which university you are coming? What are your fields? For example, I see many names here from different countries. For example, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just onboarding like you uh, through this day. I'm I'm new also in Eliza project. Uh, so I don't know. For example, I see uh, Leonardo Vico, Marius Daniel, Diana Vuta. All these names from different countries. Uh, such a richness for uh, Eliza. I don't know if they are, they are just joining or. Okay. Okay then. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Ah, Diana. Hello. Please. Diana Wutze from uh, Bucharest University Polytechnica, uh, colleague with uh, Professor Diana Robescu. I've joined uh, Elisa three weeks ago, and so far I've been involved in. Um, the trivia from last week with uh, ITU and uh, Polytechnica of Madrid. It was a very, very nice experience, pleasant. So I'm very glad to be to be involved. Uh, by the way, I'm in uh, water resources, hydropower developments, and uh, water quality. Perfect for the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. Thank you very much, Leana, for your presentation. Uh, so you are quite new. It's been only three weeks. Uh, I'm in the same situation. Uh, but when we join uh, Elisa, it goes really quickly. We, it's such a welcoming environment. It's such a nice uh, work environment. We have a great team, a global yes, team. Sorry? Yes, indeed. So you have already started working in three weeks a lot uh, with UPM. Uh, does anyone want to add anything? Just uh, comments, observations? Well, I think we can uh, stay in, in Bucharest. I am Loredana Manasia from the same university, University Polytechnica of Bucharest. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here and to work with such an amazing team. Uh, my field is sciences of education and I work with engineers, 
that prepare themselves to become teachers in STEM uh, disciplines. And I joined the ELISA communities uh, in June this year, uh, working uh, with um, the great team from uh, UPM on egalitarian societies in that community that has been built by the University Politecnica of Madrid. Well, we started uh, thinking of projects and all sorts of transversal activities that could be beneficial for both students and teachers uh, uh, as well. And more recently, I have joined the um, um, work package five uh, uh, community working on uh, the symposium and uh, well, activities related to research based uh, learning. So far, that's my experience with uh, with the ELISA project and ELISA Alliance, uh, and I hope I'll be uh, a part of this uh, of this team and we'll achieve great things uh, together. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Floridana, for sharing your experience with us. Uh, it was quite helpful for the new participants. Uh, so. Uh, does anyone have any questions or uh, just observations? Anyone else? Or we have we just come to the end of this uh, onboarding day, I suppose. Okay, well, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you to all my colleagues, all the participants for your attention uh, to the new onboarding members. And uh, we hope uh, on behalf of the ITU and ELISA, we, ha we hope to achieve uh, great work together in the future, in the near future. Uh, and thank you very much and have a nice uh, day uh, for those who are still uh, early in the early in the morning. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And see you. Uh, thank you very much. Nice to meet you time. all. Nice Thank, you. You. Nice Thank, you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.